Yeah. There's a town uh, at the northernmost part of Israel. It's 120 miles north of Jerusalem. It's called Caesarea Philippi. That means of Philip. And uh, we're talking about a town where uh, on the coasts there of Caesarea Philippi, in the extreme northeast of the Galilee, near the headwaters of the Jordan, the source of the Jordan River, uh, you have the wonderful revelation that came to Kepha. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to him. There was a little quiz, and finally he said, you are the Zunpunder Oibishter, the son of the Hai, of the Elohim Hayim. You, you are the Moshiach. Now, to have this revelation is life eternal. This was a turning point. Now, right after this, Moshiach began to foretell what was going to happen in Jerusalem. And of course, Kepha completely undid all the good that he had just done by taking the Lord aside out of earshot of the other Shalahim and rebuking him and saying, this is not going to happen to you. And then what was needed was a Yehidus. In the Orthodox Jewish Bible, we use the vocabulary of Hasidism to depict Yeshua as a wonder-working Hasidic Rebbe, which he was. And in this Yehidus, he took Kepha, Yaakov, and Yohanan. Uh, they were, again, on a mountain. And that's when the change occurred and they saw the glory everything turned white his garments they saw moshe rabenu they saw eliyahu hanavi conferring with him they had this marvelous vision to understand the tanakh as a whole the whole thing. It's not just a big setup in the Tanakh for a big letdown later, things that never happened. But Moshe talked about a prophet like him who would come. And Eliyahu demonstrated this with a, an ascension-like uh, exodus to heaven. And this, this all was shown to these men because they had to really be vaccinated, as it were, against unbelief and doubt because of what was getting ready to happen in Jerusalem. And you, if you look at uh, Matthew chapter 17, you will see that the transfiguration comes right after the first announcement of the passion, the rejection, the suffering that was gonna happen. When Zebedee's uh, wife comes to him and says, uh, I have a request. Uh, I want my sons to sit on your left hand and your right hand. 
he immediately says, you don't know what you're asking for. He looks at the boys. He, say, he says, can you drink the cup that I'm going to have to drink? Oh, yeah. And he's talking about what's going to happen in Jerusalem. And, of course, they say they can. And you know what? Yaakov did because he was the second martyr right after Stephanos. Uh, Herod had him killed. And then Johannan lived to tell the whole story, the gospel, the epistles, and the book of Revelation. Uh, but on the island of Patmos, he was almost martyred himself. But you got to see Peter confesses the Moshiach, Matthew 16. Yeshua foretells his death and resurrection. Right after that, then the transfiguration happens in chapter 17 of Matthew. And then it's on to Jerusalem where he will have to deal with the jealous, murderous enemies. And he tells a parable. And when they know that he's talking about them, they go away and they confirm, they confer together how they're going to be able to kill him. Because the people know he's a, a Navi. And uh, uh, the whole country seems to be turning toward him. The, triumph, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem was quite something. Here he is raising the dead and doing these wonders that no Hasidic Ribi could do. Uh, even uh, down through the years since uh, the 18th century and the Baal Shem Tov, no Hasidic Ribi has ever been able to do any of these, these uh, marvels that he did. And so he tells a, a parable about how uh, the owner of the vineyard wants to get the fruit. So he rents it. And the, the rental goes to these uh, workers in the vineyard. But when he comes back to get the fruit, uh, it's not forthcoming. And so when he sends his different people, they are abused, they're beaten up, whatever. He's talking now about the prophets, um, what happens to the prophets, how they're treated. Then he says, well, okay, they will respect my son. I'll send my son. And when the Pharisees know that he's talking about them, that this abuse and this rejection and this not bringing forth the fruit means that the vineyard will have to be turned over to other workers because the good news must be preached to the ends of the earth. And this goes for us today. If we don't do the work, God will raise up somebody else. Do you remember what Esther was told? If you remain silent, then deliverance will arise from another place. Don't think that you will be in good stead because you try to keep your life. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. And this is a warning to all of us that we must endure hardship and do the work of an evangelist. And I'm just sort of giving you a little overview of the major sequential events in the life of the Moshiach. So you can see why it's important to wait on the Lord. It says, wait on the Lord. 
Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Psalm 69, verse 9. I've served the Lord over 50 years, and I can tell you that I don't care what you're going through right now. Some people watching this video may be going through a divorce. Some may uh, be seeing their business and their finances completely chewed up. They may see their retirement in the stock market zeroing out. They may see horrendous things happening in their family or even with uh, doctor reports. All I can say is this, God works all things together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And if you wait on the Lord and you look back on this period, as terrible as it is, you will see that God was in it and that he was working everything for a good purpose. Yes. For instance, Artists for Israel International is now a United Bible Society entity, a 501c3 organization in New York. But the way Artists for Israel International came about was through great tribulation, great rejection and problems. And if you had known me in 1978, 79, 80, Artists for Israel International was actually established in 1980 as a not-for-profit organization in the state of New York. If you had known me at, at that time, you would say, this guy is washed up. It's all over for him. He might as well hang it up. His ministry doesn't have a prayer. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. I was certainly a Job. But out of those ashes, God put this thing together. And now 50 years later, when I see how God is shaping this organization and moving it into the future, I thank God for all that tribulation and all that trouble. And I thank God that by the mercy of the Lord, I was able to wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. If you wait on the Lord, I don't care what you're going through right now. If you wait on the Lord, he will work whatever you're going through for good for you. Because you love him and you're waiting on him. And in 1979, I never will forget, I was staying with a man who's now with the Lord, John Lipscomb, over in New Jersey. And he had given me a room upstairs. And I was looking out the window. It was snowing. It was a very snowy day. There was about five or six inches of snow, maybe a foot of snow outside. Everything was white. Everything was beautiful. But I was so crushed. But I had this Bible and I opened it and started reading these scriptures about waiting on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Rest in the Lord. Wait patient for, patiently for him. Wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. In his word do I hope. Then this one here, Psalm 37, oh, this one, wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. And Psalm 25, lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation on thee do I wait all the day. I waited patiently for the Lord, Psalm 40, and he inclined his ear unto me. He, he, he listened. I waited for him and he he listened. And he heard my cry. Those that wait upon the Lord will inherit. 
They will wait thou upon God. Let your expe expectation be from him. Uh, let not them that wait on thee, O Lord, be ashamed. These were the scriptures that I was meditating on. And all this was 50 years ago. And it's been a 50-year wait. But the Lord is faithful. And he's bringing something very glorious and very wonderful and very important out of the ashes of those days. But it's taken 50 years. And now people from all over the world, programmers, developers, uh, translation consultants, people, some are very well known. We saw a man yesterday who knew the guy in, in England who's helping me as a translation consultant. He said this man is well known in, in England. God is bringing the heavy hitters in. What a mistake I would have made if in that little room, looking at that beautiful white snow, I hadn't waited on the Lord. What a mistake you, you're going to make, my friend, for not waiting on the Lord. You've got to open that Bible and hang on to it. Because this is your hope in the word of God. When you look at the events in the life of Mashiach, he was bringing these Shulakim along. First, he elicited the saving confession from the key lead out preacher, Kepha, the one that would be preaching on Shavuos filled with the Holy Spirit. Then there was a Yahidus, and they saw him transfigured and changed, and they had this vision of who he really is. It was as if he were on the glory cloud, and they could see him in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, and know who he is, the Bar Enosh, who comes to the Atik Yomim, and then he begins to reiterate over and over again what's going to happen in Jerusalem. And then he fortifies them for this. The word of God will fortify you if you wait upon him and meditate on his word day and night, Joshua. You will be a person who will see wondrous things in due time. And I am a testimony for this. Thank God for that little room in New Jersey mm. and for that Bible that I had. Yes. And I have that same edition right now in my lap 50 years later and i want to give god the glory and i want to pray right now lord i want to pray for everyone watching this video that they will learn to wait on the lord and be of good courage yeah and know that whatever they're going through right now as terrible as it might be god will actually take it and turn it around and work it for good for them because they love God, they wait on the Lord and they hang on his word and they endure to the end and so are saved. Lord, we ask you right now that somebody would pray and receive you tonight, that somebody would open the Psalms and start looking for the Moshiach, that somebody would Google 
they pierced my hands and my feet and watch the video there, number one on page one of Google under the Google videos and see that the Psalms are about him. They are about David's great son and all of his tribulations and all of his glory. And that Psalm 22 is one of the great Psalms to show this. Yes, we may be humbled, but if we wait on the Lord, we will be exalted in due season. And oh God, we want to pray right now for all these people that you're sending to us, for all the work that's going on, for the leading of the Lord in all these things. May we not look to men. It was not any man that I could look to. May we look to you, Lord, and wait on you and you only. And we'll give you all the praise and all, all the glory and everybody.